Hello, good day. Today I'm going to be showing you the fastest way to run Linux Ubuntu on your Apple Silicon Mac. I have tried uh, a couple of options already before now. Firstly, I tried VirtualBox, it's one of the most popular ones. But this didn't work for me because I, the last time I used it, I was using an Intel device and it worked well. But for silicon devices, it was very bad. Uh, it was laggy, I had issues with the sound, I had issues with uh, the crashes, it would crash so many times and I would have to reinstall it again, as the case might be. I got tired of trying to get it to work for about a day and a half, and I tried to use uh, VMware. Uh, VMware has a paid and a free version, but I had to, you have to go through hoops, you have to sign up and do all that. I didn't want to do that, so I got tired of jumping up and down, and I went to ChatGPT and asked the basic question, uh, what, are the first, what are the best five virtual machines to run Ubuntu? And the first option that came up was UTM. Since it was the best for Apple Silicon and it was free. It has native support for Silicon. Uh, it also has support for Intel Macs. Uh, it's free and open source. It's lightweight and efficient. I can testify to this, it actually is. Slower than parallels due to the emulation, but this is only on Intel devices. But this video is for uh, Silicon devices, so we don't have issues with that. Uh, limited 3D graphics support. So, uh, this will probably only affect you if you are doing some sort of rendering and stuff or things that have to do with like 3D graphics in the virtual machine. I just want to use mine for cloud engineering so I don't have to bother much about uh, the, the 3D graphics support for now. We have this guy also, the Parallels uh, desktop. It's paid, that's like the, the only downside to it. It doesn't support Intel Macs, but we don't care about that. We won't actually wanted to use it for just ARM max uh, vmware it has like the paid and the free version it's um i didn't want to go through all that i don't know if it's bad or good i think i used it once on windows so many years ago i can't tell what exactly it is now but it should have improved virtual box used to be great on my windows device and my uh intel mac it was terrible for silicon don't even bother using it it's gonna waste your time i didn't try multipass at all so i can't speak about multipass so the first thing we want to do is to download Ubuntu desktop. Um, yeah, you want to come to the website, uh, ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. If I go back one step, you'll see the real. So then click on this, download LTS and download now. When it starts, you want to make sure you're getting the AMD version since you're running on an Apple MacBook. You want to make sure you're getting the AMD version. I have this already, as you can see it here. So I don't need to download it again. Then secondly, we go to mac.getutm.app, uh, click on download, and automatically it starts downloading. Like This download process or this download experience whereby you come to the website, the first thing you click on download, it doesn't tell you to start choosing heaven and earth. It just gives you a download link. That's exactly how fast it works. Kudos to these guys. So you can also download it from the Mac store, but we're not here for that. Uh, all right, so assuming we've downloaded this, I will just come here. Uh, let me run up, uh, show you an instance of this Ubuntu running on this uh, UTM software, virtual machine. Uh, it takes just a few seconds. You can see here on my, <laughs> on my home screen, I have multiple, I have like a Linux backup. If you can hear that sound, that's the sound of it booting up. The sound comes out of the box. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to configure anything special. It just comes out. It did not work for once on VirtualBox. You can see I have a Linux backup here and a regular Linux. This was from the PTSD of using VirtualBox and it crashing so many times. So whenever I got it to work to a particular state, I would save it and clone it so that I could have a backup. But I don't need that backup right now. So this is it. You can see it running on my device in full screen. Um, yeah. So you can, if you go to settings, you can see the displays. I'm running 4K, 60 hertz, 200% scale because it was just too small, only 100%. Uh, basically, everything works. The sound card works out of the box. Front, right, front, left, front, right. That works. So I'll just shut this down. But before I shut it down, I also let you know something also. Um, if you're using this machine, probably I'll have to check out uh, how to fix this for now. But one bug I found so far is that it doesn't suspend. Suspend is like uh, hibernate or sleep. 
right? Hibernate for Windows, sleep for Mac. It's supposed to just go into like a sleep mode, but it doesn't work, it crashes. So you can see internal visualization error. Um, if I try to start it up again, I get there's a uh, terminal error that speeds up at the top left. The fastest way I found to fix this is just to do, click on this button here, I'll cancel this. Come to the top here, click on this back arrow. It uh, restarts, it basically just restarts the virtual machine and tells you to select Ubuntu. If you click on Ubuntu, press enter, it boots up again as usual. But uh, I don't want to do this, so I will just close it up and power down the machine. That's fine for me. So this is what we're going to be doing and you're going to see how fast it is. So the first thing we want to do is to click on the plus button at the top here to create a new virtual machine. You want to select virtualize so that it uses your native, it runs natively on the on your Apple Silicon. Emulate is for um, Intel Macs. So I want to click on virtualize, you want to select Linux, use Apple virtualization. If you leave this unchecked, it's going to default to uh, to the second option. It's going to default back to this option of emulate. So you want to make sure you check this use Apple virtualization box. Just come down here, browse, look for your image file, your Ubuntu image file. This is my desktop. So I just select that and continue. Uh, it depends on the amount of RAM you have on your device. If you have 8 gigs of RAM, you can probably give it like 3 to 4 gigs of RAM. I have 48 gigs, so I can be generous with mine, but let's just give it 8 gigs for this. Uh, I probably can give it up to 8 cores. I have about 32 cores. And this is a, an M, M4 Max with 48 gigs of RAM, so I, I can be generous with that. Uh, 64 gig is fine. Um, you also probably want to give it a shared directory. What this does is basically allows you to be able to share files between your Mac and the virtual machine. So files you put inside of this share shared folder will be visible inside of the Ubuntu uh, virtual machine when you're running it. So I have this shared folder and I basically just use this. For now, let me probably make it my apps folder and we can check if that actually works because I've not tested if it works, but in theory that it's supposed to work. Uh, next thing, we just want to give your virtual machine a name so you can call this Ubuntu or whatever name you want to call your device. And click on save. Voila. So we have this now. We just click on play and the machine boots up. Uh, we want to select try or install Ubuntu. You press enter. Give it a few seconds and you're already almost up and running. So the way Ubuntu works is that they give you like a... I won't call it the trial version, but you can just basically test the software and see if you want to install it fully on your device or you want to um, eject it. So basically what is running now is this is trying to boot up from the disk image, this one that we downloaded. So it's booting directly from this disk image here. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want that to, you want to be able to save your data. So that's the sound there. This took about a minute to set up. So this guy works, you can see how snappy it is. You can snap to the left or to the right as the case might be. This is our sidebar here. Uh, never mind the small screen for now. So basically you have this welcome to Ubuntu in the middle. What you want to do is it wants to give you like an installation process. So I'll select English. Uh, I don't have accessibility issues. Um, English US, connect to the internet using wired connection. Don't bother about this, your wired connection is just, uh, basically it's like a wired connection from your Mac to the virtual machine. Uh, install Ubuntu. So you can either try it, but it doesn't save the stuff you do. You do, but since you want to fully install this, click on install. Uh, interactive installation, it's fine. Uh, default selection is fine. Install third party, I, I checked this when I did mine. Click on next, but I, I don't have to do this again because it's probably just gonna take time. Um, yeah, I don't have to check this because it will take time, but you probably should check this so you can get like your graphic drivers and everything that you need. Uh, erase this, this and install. So just select the first option. Basically, what this does is the 64 gig you, have, you made available to this uh, virtual machine when creating it. It wants to use all that disk. So don't when you see erase disk, don't be scared thinking it's your MacBook. It's not. This is just a virtual machine and it's running inside of here, so you can erase that. 
but you can give it your name i can call this um youtube um the computer's name i can just you can delete all of these and say youtube pc something like that my username is youtube my password one two three four super secure one two three four very secure you can see I require my password to log in i just want to check that out because i'm the only one that uses my system there's nothing special happening in my virtual machine uh, but special things happen in my mac so your mac has to be secure on your virtual machine you don't really care so this is just a summary of everything that you're doing and you click on install this takes anywhere between five to ten minutes it could be one minute depending on your internet connection um yeah this could be any amount of time depends on your internet connection so i want to keep this one side we can come here uh type search and just type settings if you want to get the settings bar out and enlarge this so it looks very small now so we want to come to display and put in my case you already selected the resolution of my monitor which is 4k i just want to select 200 scaling click on apply keep changes and we have this big screen yeah. don't bother about this i find i didn't find any cure for this but it just affects this um installer if you return it back to 100 scaling the installer works fine it shows up fine so i guess it doesn't sit well with this so you can just wait for this guy to complete and you change your scaling type but we can just change it for now uh, i like to use dark mode so yeah that's better uh you can see the sound here you can test it front right front left front right the speakers work very well you can turn on whatever you want to turn on ubuntu desktop you can choose your appearances set your wallpaper basically this is the tutorial is already over if you got to this point you already set up and run there's nothing special you need to do again right uh probably want to return this guy back so that it looks good so change the scale and it came back to 100 so this guy goes back to looking good uh, but this is small you probably also want to make your dock bigger mm, where is that yeah i don't know <laughs> how i would agree i can't find it uh you probably also want to pin your settings to the dock because it's something you're going to be using a lot uh, there's a way to pin this dock here i can't remember i actually did it on my own device but as you can see this guy is installing and it's it's working fine i'll probably just keep the video to the end when this is fully installed and yeah Okay, so the installation is complete now. Uh, you can continue testing, but ideally you want to restart now. So we'll just click on restart now. And the virtual machine starts uh, all over. This time around, it's no longer booting from the Dix image that we loaded on the virtual machine, but it's booting directly from our installation uh, of the operating system itself. So uh, this would take probably take a few seconds and it boots up and we're good to go. The reason I like this is that it's way faster, it's more straightforward. I love, I love the welcome sound also. So you can see welcome to Ubuntu and um, yeah, you want to do like basic uh, setups. No, don't share anything. We're not interested in all that. Get started with your applications, finish. Um, this is the Ubuntu, it's still mounted. You can unmount this and also remove it from the home screen so now we can go and change our display you can see the settings we pinned here is no longer there because we're using like a trial or test version so now we can do settings drag this pin it here and open this go to displays uh, 200 maybe even 300 because why not ah that's too big and ugly so we want to reduce it to this and then now we have basically we have everything um yeah 
we have our internet you can set up a vpn if you want and this works like flawlessly out of the box you could try some browsing or what something yeah usually you give us a deal yeah. really i'm gonna play me ads no bye so yeah that's about it uh remember also the suspend and restart issue so if you want to do this if you're doing something with this i would say either you leave it running and just sleep your macbook or you save your work before you shut down probably if i find a way to fix this or if anyone has a way to fix this issue of the suspend you can just uh put a comment in the comment box and probably i can see that and it would help other people also but that's about it so that's how you run ubuntu on utn virtual machine so we will just power this off and we are done close this yeah so you can go ahead and delete this guy y yes so you see the size has also increased to seven gig because you've actually now installed it this is the external drive it's still mounted you can go to the settings for this guy here click on settings uh you want to go to You want to come here to this and click on delete it's fine make sure you are deleting this because basically this is the mounted image if you don't want it to show up on your file system anymore so you can delete this and it's fine you save and you see it still runs yeah so it still runs fine uh thanks for watching like the video if it helped you uh get this done faster All right. Oh yeah. Uh, another important thing you can see, I'm using basically using uh, just like 34% of my RAM. So it depends on the amount of RAM you assign to uh, the virtual machine. This would also increase or decrease. We're using like eight gigs, so that's like quite small. Um, yeah, that's about it. So have a nice one, guys.